All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about how we installed this Solar Edge inverter, HD Wave 7600, without an LED screen, the newest model, inside our garage. And I'm gonna go over some Powerwall tips that will help you with charging your batteries um, if you're on a time of use or demand management plan. So before we do that, let's see the intro. on this video we're going to talk about how we move my solar edge inverters from inside uh, to the inside from the outside and uh, the reason we did this is we're going to be on our third solar edge inverter that solar edge is sent out to us uh, for rma return and um, before i was about to do that i thought about okay before we install it outside maybe i should ask around uh, people who also have solar edge inverters. So I reached out to the Tesla Energy uh, Powerwall Facebook group and posted a question and said, you know, should I install my solar edge inverter inside? Because I'm seeing some, you know, early failures, uh, this being the third one that we're about to install. And overwhelmingly, the answer received from you guys was that, yes, you should install it outside or inside. Um, so we went ahead and installed it inside. So my first solar edge inverter went out after about six months and uh, we did the whole RMA process. And again, my downtime was only two weeks. Good idea to have a good relationship with your solar panel company because if you have a problem, you're gonna wanna call them and you want someone that picks up the phone. And in my cases, the maximum time I've waited is just the period to get the whatever kind of replacement parts or RMA, in this case, it's solar edge inverters, um, delivered to the solar panel company. And then as soon as they receive it, they come out, you know, in less than a week and install it. And I've heard of some nightmares with Tesla not being able to fulfill their requests or it takes a long time to get the repairs done. But I haven't had that issue with my solar panel company, so, um, I think when you're investing in solar, uh, this is probably one important consideration is trying to figure out um, who your provider is for the install and whether they have good reviews, good customer service, and uh, they're gonna be there to for you in case you have a problem, if you do have a problem. All right, so the next videos you'll see are the actual install. Um, I just kind of clipped it with some music so you guys could see just really quick what they did, what was the process, how they drilled the holes, and then what kind of equipment they used. But what you should see is that we basically took out the outside solar inverter, uh, removed it, removed any conduit that was there, and then piped that conduit through the wall and put the inverter uh, above my power wall and then put up new conduit and then you should also notice that that inverter is the new model. And that was about the install. So let's see some, some of the install video here. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the Solar Edge inverter install went. I'm glad that it's the new model and that now it's inside and I think it'll last a while because it's got a lot of heat protection being inside the garage now. And 
in these next takes, we're gonna see, I have brought up my Tesla application and you should see that all of my solar is going to the battery. Now I'm on a time of use demand management plan. And what that means is for me, optimal usage of my panels and my batteries are to have my panels just solely charge up the batteries up to 100% and then to only discharge those during the peak periods. So the peak period for me in my time of use plan is 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. So up to 2 p.m., I direct all the solar panels to charge my batteries and then at 2 p.m. we discharge. All right, guys, so I'm in my Tesla Energy Gateway application. You can see my batteries are at 43%, and if I don't really charge them today, um, that's not gonna be great for when we enter our peak period. So right here, I'm at 43%. It says the Energy Gateway is charging. So I'm just gonna show the settings that we have set right now. Uh, the time right now is 8.49 a.m., and our peak period is gonna start at 2 p.m. So right now I'm in what's called the advanced time-based control mode, and I'm in the cost savings, and my reserve for power outages is set to 100%. So what this means is we're gonna take all the solar um, and charge that the batteries at 100%. And then we can see my price schedule here. I'll click on the edit price schedule button, and you can see, uh, so SRP Solar does 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. for their peak and off-peak time. So my peak right now is 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, just to be 100% certain, I set it a little bit before 2 p.m. So it does 30-minute increments. So I do 1.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and that's what I'm setting my price schedule. I don't have a shoulder. I just have a peak. So 1.30 p.m. to 8 p.m., and that's what I set that schedule to. And we can push done here. We'll go back and we can see the power flow right now. So this is why this is important, at least for me. Uh, my home uses 2.4 kilowatts right now. That's just you know our basic AC usage um, and the different appliances that we have. And you can see here, the solar is at 0.9 kilowatts and it's going directly into the power wall. And that's great because I'm gonna get all of the solar into the power wall and I should reach around 100%, you know, by 2 p.m., 8 p.m., uh, somewhere around there. Um, even at 2 p.m., I do turn down some of my appliances so that uh, the house isn't using then a ton of energy. And then the any I get like around 2.4 kilowatts on solar. Um, and my system is kind of a smaller system. It's a 3.7 kilowatt system but like if i'm getting 2.4 kilowatts then either um, all of that's going to the power wall if it's before my peak period this is actually one more screen i wanted to show so right here you can see three things you can see the blue that's how much energy my the house is using or the appliances in the house so it's going you know almost up to 10 kilowatts um at the right now it's around noon and then you also see so we'll start with that we'll start with the blue and this is the home usage so total home usage is 40.6 kilowatt hours and then the right here at 12 o'clock we're peaking around uh around 10 kilowatts um and then we'll turn on solar so click this here and you can see my, I have the smaller solar system, but you can see here, solar is getting up to like 2.5 kilowatts by noon. And then I'll turn on my battery. And so see the battery's going negative. So when this green area, this is the battery, it's negative, it's the power wall's charging. So, um, and it's actually a reflection of my solar. So right now, this, this, is just telling us that all the solar is going to Powerwall. And in the meantime, um, the, the grid, uh, let's see here, if I turn these guys off, we can see what the grid, this is what's being charged to the grid. The grid actually is matching my house right now. Um, and so with this, I'm able to do, uh, you know, charge solar into batteries and then 
during the off and at below here we're defining off peak from about like 8 a.m until right here um we're we will have a defined peak time um so for me my defined peak time starts around 2 p.m so at 2 p.m what you you'll see is that i'll just show you so right now it's 3 p.m and it's during our peak hour and what we see now is the home is asking for 1.5 kilowatts solar is producing 2.5 kilowatts so what it's doing is first it's going to put this to the home because it's our peak hour so solar instead of going directly to the power wall and charging it it's going to split off and put any solar into the home and then now excess is going to the power wall um, and this is different than our off peak hour where we don't care we don't need solar to go to home all our solar can just go to the power wall. And for me, I think this is one kind of downside to the Tesla Energy Gateway application is that you can't really control uh, how excess solar is treated um, other than just setting the backup mode or the reserve mode to 100%. Um, so I kind of wish Tesla gave you like manual control, like I want it to charge with all the solar, you know, at 2 p.m. And then at 5 p.m. I want it to do this, or at 9 p.m. I want it to do this. Um, I really like, you know, in my Nest thermostat, I can control all kinds of settings. I can put any kind of temperature and I can define that for every day, for every time period, like six, seven, eight, multiple time periods. I mean. I think ultimately that's where a power wall should give you, um, it should give you this manual control. But for now, Tesla's kind of thought about, you know, simplifying the interface and coming up with an algorithm that tries to learn your usage. But I find day to day that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really learn my exact usage and it doesn't work for, for at least our power plan, the SRP solar plan. Um, so once you figure out that you can control the reserve mode and the backup mode, then, well, once I figured that out, I learned also that there's an API, a REST interface that you can use. And uh, I will have an in-depth video on more on that, about how you can actually remotely control the uh, backup mode, the reserve mode. And then if you combine that with the price schedule, um, then you have a surefire way to automate the changing of how much charge is going to your uh, power wall versus like whether it's going to use excess solar or it's not going to use excess solar, whether it's going to use all the solar. And uh, once you figure all that out, then you have a surefire way to bring demand to zero, whether it's the winter, whether it's the summer, whether you have like two or three peak periods in your um, energy plan and then then we're in, we're in a good place because uh, we're bringing demand to zero we're, and we're ensuring like in the on peak that the energy usage is zero and that's ultimately going to bring our prices down um, yeah so we'll do uh, sometime we'll do an in-depth video on that um, and for this video that's all I have um, uh, we're really happy with the installation that was done, and uh, we're looking forward to having this solar edge inverter for a while. Um, one thing I am going to research is I have heard that you can extend the warranty from 12 years to like 25 years. So I'm going to look into that next, and maybe I'll do a small video um, in response to this one about what it takes to do that. Hopefully it's just like a call into the solar company, but let's see. Um, so thank you everyone. Um, that's all I have for this video. So please hit the like and subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video.